The universe really doesn't want you guys to get my thinking book recommendations. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. I know that you guys are gonna say that the uploading schedule isn't that important and that I should take care of myself and everything, but I do want to apologize that at the time of filming at least it's been a full week since I put anything out. <coughs> this is actually my second time filming this video. I filmed it and edited it and I deleted the original clip before exporting, not realizing that that would mean I wasn't able to export the video. So that happened. There has been construction going on in my neighborhood and on the road that I live on, so there hasn't been a ton of time that I can film. And then for the past couple of days, I've been sick. Today, I'm still a little sick, but I feel quite a bit better. I just brewed this tea because I realized I was going to need it to be able to get through filming. <laughs> so if I seem a little bit stuffy or my voice sounds a little bit odd, it's because I've had a head cold for two days and I still have a little bit of a head cold. So I want to apologize in advance for it even though I realize that you guys are really sweet and you'll probably say that apologies are not needed. I'm apologizing anyway. Also this setup is kind of different. I just wanted to try out filming a little bit further away from me, even though that means that there's more of the wall and everything in the background. It's not just this one bookshelf, there's the top of my other bookshelf that's right here. So this is kind of experimental, we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. But I'm finally getting to you with my thinking book recommendations. I did my feeling recommendations a little while back. I talked about what feeling was and how it was making decisions based on values and taking into account the people in the situation. On the other side, there's thinking, which is making decisions based off of logic. People who fall on the thinking side of the spectrum are trying to be consistent in the way that they're making decisions based off of the truths of the situation or the principles therein. They're analyzing what's going on, and they sometimes even come across as being a little bit impersonal in their attempt to be fair in how they make their decisions. And rather than being people-oriented, taking into account the people of the situation, they're more task-oriented, what is actually happening. So the books that I'm going to be recommending for thinking types may work for feeling types as well, like I enjoyed most of these or all of these really and I am a feeling type person. And just because you're a thinking type doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to love these, this is just if you like analytic decision making then I think that you will like these. And the first one that I want to recommend is actually kind of a religious memoir by one of my favorite authors that based on the title you would assume would be a feeling one, but I think it actually falls on the side of thinking, and that is A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis. And I think that this book falls on the thinking side because it is analyzing his theology based on the actual experience that he has had of losing his wife, whom he's been married to for the past four years. And this is him examining what he holds to be true and how it holds up based on his current experience, which is so thought-oriented that even though it's about his grief process, it's more on the thinking side than the emotional side. And I think that you could really enjoy this if you are interested in religion or theology in a way, or if you are interested in the grief process. Though I don't think you have to be religious to enjoy this, but if you like the religious themes, it would probably appeal to you. My next thinking book recommendation is actually a trilogy that I haven't finished yet. I have one book left in the trilogy, and that is The Binti Novellas by Nadia Korafor. I have The Night Masquerade checked out from the library because I'm going to be reading it sometime in the next month or so. And these are adult science fiction novellas. They're kind of, but not exactly, space opera. In the first one, Benti is going to Space University, <laughs> Umza University. So that one's more of a space opera, whereas Benti Home, the second novella, is coming back to Earth. And then I think Benti The Night Masquerade will be taking place entirely on Earth, based on what I'm predicting will happen. So it's kind of space opera, but kind of not. It's very influenced by space though. Speaking of influences, it's also just generally influenced by science and math. There's almost a magic that's kind of math-ish in this that I don't quite understand, but I think that if you enjoy those concepts, it's something that would appeal to you. But this all really kicks off the first book in the trilogy when Benti decides to go to Umzi University after being accepted and being the first person ever accepted from her tribe. And even though the community and her family expect her to stay, she decides to go anyway. And I know that that could be interpreted as a values-based decision, and that decision is so task-oriented, it is not so much people-oriented, it is not 
based on her family or the community. And that's what has the biggest influence on this trilogy is that decision that she's made. And then all of the conflicts that come up with the community members and family members because of that. And I think that we're kind of held a bit at a distance from Binti emotionally. I mean, we get her experiences and everything and what she's feeling, but it's not super feelings oriented. And I think that that's where a lot of the critiques for this book come in because of that almost impersonal feeling about Binti. But even with that, I still really connect with this a lot. My third thinking recommendation is sort of a historic graphic memoir. I say it's historic and a memoir because it's chronicling someone's experience in a concentration camp, but it's written by their son, but it's also talking about the son's experience, which is complicated. That's Moss by Art Spiegelman. I think some people say it like mouse, but I think Moss makes sense. <laughs> and it's sort of a duology. The first one is My Father Bleeds History, and the second is And Here My Troubles Began. And I think that this is really analyzing Art's experience with his father and then his dad's experience being in a concentration camp, but it's made a little less personal, or I think where it will hit a little less close to home and be less intense because they're portrayed as animals, which makes sense for graphic work portraying concentration camp experiences. But this is also just very real. It's examining those experiences and examining their relationship while also not being super relationship oriented. Art gets very frustrated with his father for being the way he is sometimes. He's not always super empathetic. There's just the day-to-day -day living and how he functions in society that is bothersome to Art at some times. But it's not like there's not a love relationship, it's just portraying it in a very real way of a son being frustrated with his father while also coming to understand the experience that his father has. And I think that this examination was very well done. Now the art style is not my favorite, but I would speculate that art style might be less important for those who are on the thinking side of the spectrum because they are interested in the truth and the principle of the matter. My fourth recommendation is one that I've actually done a full spoiler for your review of, so I'm not going to say too much about the plot or anything, but I received it for a review from Candlewick Press, and that is Landscape with Invisible Hand by M.T. Anderson. This is YA dystopian science fiction, it's novella length, and it's actually kind of satirical. It's examining art and truth in the society that has been taken over by the Vub, which are aliens that really don't have use for humans, but they are entertained by humans in human culture, so they are watching them. So people can go on and be filmed for Vub entertainment. Kind of like a soap opera, but they want real life, so people often fake things to try to be entertaining. And these themes are just like meant to be analyzed. I think I've seen reviews where people said this was practically like meant to be examined in a classroom setting. It's very thought focused and truth influenced and examining the concept of what is true and what will people do with truth. And if you're interested in hearing more about it and my thoughts on it, I will leave my review up in the cards. And then finally, my last thinking recommendation is The New Jim Crow. Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness by Michelle Alexander. This is like a social justice focused political history and it's also very sociological. This is re-examining what we thought was true about mass incarceration in the prison population and even topics like the war on drugs and the racism that is inherent in the system. And it's also looking into the treatment of specific populations, particularly black people. And this is extremely analytic, very factual. It's not really feelings focused very much at all, it's these are the facts, these are the numbers, this is what is happening. Which is evident based off of the 40 pages of notes in the back of this like 300 page book. <laughs> Alexander is a lawyer, so she knows her stuff. <laughs> Though the treatment of these people is portrayed in the book, it's not really stories so much. I think that if you want a more feelings focused or people oriented approach, so a feeling book recommendation for this topic, or one that's similar, maybe Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson would work for you. I just thought it did an excellent job and I actually appreciated the very analytical take that this had because I think that we often hear a lot of the stories and not so much the straight facts. Not that I think that the stories aren't valid, stories are definitely important and they have their place and they draw people into causes that maybe they weren't familiar with, but I really appreciated this analysis. And I think that if you are a thinking person, then you will appreciate it too.
particularly if this is a subject that is close to your heart. But anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. These are my recommendations for thinking types or if you like thinking kind of books. I don't know whether or not this was quick. The filming took a while because I realized I'm starting to feel less good and more shaky as I was filming. But whatever, I'm gonna wrap this up quickly now. <laughs> Comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these and what you thought of them. And also if there are any books that you think would work particularly well for thinking types. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye.